On April 7, 2013, the two mega powers of shonen anime, Dragon Ball and One Piece, would collaborate for the first time ever on TV. The episode saw Goku and Luffy teaming up in a pretty innocuous fun episode that was purely just fan service. But if you know anything about this TV special, you would know that Goku and Luffy were not alone. In fact, the whole episode was created in celebration of something that's not either Dragon Ball or One Piece. Alongside Goku and Luffy was this guy, a blue-haired muscular character who came in rep in his own series. And this episode was created as the first anniversary of his anime, Toriko. This special episode recently received a US release, and people have the same reaction every time it goes viral. Who is the other guy? Toriko at one point was considered to be a huge prospect in the shonen world, even appearing in the J-Star Victory game in 2015. But almost 8 years after the completion of his manga and 10 years after his anime run, the series remains largely unknown and pretty much have faded into obscurity over the years. But is the manga actually worth reading? Why was it not popular? Is there a chance it picks up a second win? I'll break it all down for you. Toriko was written and drawn by Mizuto Shishimabukuro, who is a close friend of the legendary Eiichiro Oda of One Piece fame. The serialization of Toriko began in 2008 and lasted until 2016, whereas the anime was broadcasted in Japan from 2011 to 2014. Toriko follows the adventures of its titular character, and the story is set in this futuristic landscape where food can provide you with more than just nutrition. It pretty much gives you superpowers among other extraordinary benefits beyond just flavor and nutrients. And because of their exceptional qualities, there is a struggle and a fight over these ingredients, with the evil organizations trying to take all the food for themselves. I first encountered Toriko as a kid purely by chance on a local network, and that was when I had no idea what good or bad anime was. Quite frankly, I didn't care, and as a child, Toriko the anime was great to me. The bright colors, the adventurous feeling, the eye-catching monster designs, and this harmless fun story of Toriko hunting rare ingredients while encountering different challenges and threats. I thought it was great. But fast forward a few years later, my English got better, I started reading more manga, watching more anime, and I wanted to try Toriko again and this time the manga as well. And upon trying to connect the ending of the anime to the manga so, you know, I could pick up where I left off, I found out nothing made sense. There are so many discrepancies between the anime and the manga, as well as a severe difference in tone and the maturity of the themes that I explored. I was quite shocked and instantly realized that the Toriko anime was not the correct adaptation of the manga like at all. The ending of the anime and the whole final fight is not even canon in the manga, and the themes about food are so much more nuanced than the original, if not even a bit depressing at times. The bad guys that I mentioned earlier that want to hawk all the food for themselves, the leader of that organization, Midora, is one of the most tragic characters that I've ever seen. He was born an orphan and had to fight and claw for every single meal every day and had nobody to take care of him. But one day he was adopted by this woman called Furose, a legendary chef and taken into the family of Akashia, who was also a legendary gourmet hunter. Midora was the third son of the family, with Jiro and Ichiryu, two extraordinarily strong characters in their own way, being his seniors. Midora would become attached to his foster mother Furose and loved her unconditionally, and in a way he was also possessive of his mother. Furose was an extremely kind and caring woman who wanted everyone to enjoy food, but Midora showed a distinct disdain towards people who didn't appreciate Furose's acts of kindness and quite frankly wanted her to just ignore the rest of the world. But during this part in the story, there were a lot of war and famine across the globe, and Akashiya and Furose were dedicated to stopping that. Their end goal was the fabled ingredient called God, obtaining which was the primary goal of many characters including Toriko himself. At the time, God was the key to ending war and hunger, and it took someone like Furose to actually prepare the dish. And upon the completion of their quest, Furose was very depleted, and her condition wasn't looking good. And as you could probably guess, Midora was not happy about this at all. He took it upon himself to acquire the cure water, a sensu bean-like product if you will, but it just happened to be guarded by one of the strongest monsters in Toriko, the Dragon King, and Midora ended up only making matters worse, wounding himself heavily in the process. Ironically, Furose would have to use what little energy she had left to cure her son as one final act of kindness before passing away, and this changed everything. Midora was never able to cope with the loss of the person that mattered to him the most, and he blamed the world for it. His mother, the anchor of his life, sacrificed herself for their sake and they're not even thankful. And the war came to an end, but greed, famine, poverty, they continued just like before. Nothing changed. This is what drove Midora as a villain. His pursuit of God 
and his motivations to build a monopoly for himself are far deeper than just a simple world domination plot. It's to spite humanity on purpose, and also because food is the only way in which he can recall his mother again. It's like an unhealthy coping mechanism. He eats and he eats, and he becomes one of the strongest characters in the cast, but there's no satiation. There's nothing he can do to fill the void inside his chest. It's not like the anime completely removes his arc or anything, it is there, but it just has so much more weight in the manga. If the pointless censoring and the highly unnecessary bright colors and art direction weren't bad enough, the anime doesn't cover the hundreds of chapters that make up the gourmet arc. The geography of Torigo is split into the human world and the gourmet world, the latter being the more gritty and harsh environment of the Torigo lore. The human world arc is kind of wholesome, it's very adventurous, but it's kind of an intro for the gourmet world arc like a training arc before the real battle. But in the manga, even the human world arc has extremely bleak and dramatic moments that are brought to life by Shimabukuro's great arc and really brutal combat that sell the seriousness of the situation. But the enemy reduces all of the blood to just mere smudges and smears on their body, and all of the characters' special attacks are so extremely bright for no reason. The payoff of Midoriya's arc also only happens in the gourmet arc, so to be blunt, the anime is just kinda pointless. If the manga is the Justice League movie made by Zack Snyder, the anime is the 2017 theatrical cut. Besides Midora, character writing isn't exactly the strongest part of Torigo if you look at the rest of the cast, but at least the main character is good. Torigo is just a straightforward, likable throwback character, you know, before every shonen protagonist became a young teen that's trying to be the best. Torigo is not some underdog. He already has reputation and respect, he's just trying to complete his food course meal, which includes God as well. And his relationship with his partner Komasu is also one of the highlights of the manga. Komasu is a very talented chef, but he's extremely timid, and traveling alongside Toriko, he found himself in more life and death situations than he can count. And he slowly became a more courageous and composed person over time. It's a classic trope and it works every time for me. I especially like how Komasu was handled because he naturally gets screen time. There are times when Toriko can't beat an enemy just by his own efforts, and Komasu has to come in clutch with a really specific meal to give Toriko a boost. And so their dynamic as a hunter and a chef is very well done, and it's just a good way to make sure that a major supporting character remains relevant. Outside of Komasu, there are a few more interesting characters like Akashia, the legendary hunter who ended all wars and famine, the man who is revered by pretty much everyone in Toriko. But is he really everything he claims to be? Does he have some skeletons in his closet? The gourmet world arc is all about that history, and it's really good. And even if Toriko lacks a bit in the writing department, it completely makes up for it with this excellent world building, and just by being so creative. It's like those fantasy stories you loved as a kid where you just want to live in their world. It's so full of life from the futuristic metropolises to the wildlife, the unique peculiar vegetation, and the hybrid animals and beasts that are as majestic as they're scary. And of course, I can't leave out how delicious and unique all of the food looks. Everything just feels so immersive and it draws you in. Torigo is everything I love about Shonen done right. It's an emotionally satisfying straightforward story that does not insist upon itself. The tale of Torigo can only be described as unfortunate. It was plagued by bad timing, as well as a notoriously bad anime that at best was an extremely toned down version of the source material, and at worst was intentional sabotage. The downfall of Torigo in terms of popularity was so severe that even the manga had kind of a rushed ending. The major plot threads got resolved, but Shima had ideas for a whole space arc, and more lore about gourmet sales, and just overall history of everything in Torigo, but they had to be crammed into a quick epilogue, because Torigo for a few months up to its completion was constantly placed in less at the TOC, and if it kept up, it was at risk of getting cancelled. It's truly a shame, this had all the potential in the world, and by all means should have been one of the biggest series of our time. And we saw a glimpse of that potential in the OVA made by Ufotable, which did the manga more justice in one episode than Toei did in a whole season. Ever since 2016, the stock value of Torigo has been pretty much just dead, so it's not very realistic to expect a return of the anime under a different studio or something like that. But you never know. There was a 13th anniversary even of the manga about 7 months ago, and even a small key visual generated some buzz. So it's somewhat maintaining its position as a cult classic. But with that being said, you should not really let the rushed ending of the manga and the drama surrounding the bad anime deter you from enjoying the 396 chapters of the manga because overall, the manga is a brilliant body of work. Before I end this video, it weighs on my conscience to mention that the author of Toriko, Mitsudoshi Shimabukuro, has a pretty controversial past, where in 2002, he did some indecent things with a minor female. 
and because of this quote-unquote conviction, his ongoing manga at the time before Toriko was cancelled abruptly. Many sources do also state that he was tricked into believing she was of age, so whether or not he's guilty is kind of murky. So make of that information what you will. If you feel like you can't get into Toriko at all because of this knowledge, I fully understand. I only found out about this case like a month ago myself. And I was severely disappointed too because I've been through the same heartbreak with Rurouni Kenshin. It looks like you just gotta separate the art from the artist sometimes. So far, it's been Edward Takeshi. Thank you for watching as always. Happy New Year and peace.